الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي كتب الآثار ونسخ الآجال القلوب عنده مفضية والسر عنده علانية الحلال ما أحل والحرام ما حرم الدين ما شرع والأمر ما قضى الخلق خلقه والأمر أمره وهو الله الرؤوف الرحيم أما بعد فأصلي على النبي الأمين خاتم النبيين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله التابعين وأصحابه أجمعين يا رب العالمين يقول الله تبارك وتعالى والنجم إذا هوى ما ضل صاحبكم وما غوى وما ينطق عن الهوى إن هو إلا وحي يوحى علمه شديد القوى ذو مرة فاستوى وهو بالأفق الأعلى ثم دنا فتدلى فكان قاب قوسين أو أدنى فأوحى إلى عبده ما أوحى ما كذب الفؤاد ما رأى أفتمارونه على ما يرى Dear brothers and sisters, we start by praising Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and we ask Allah ta'ala of his mercy. We ask of Allah ta'ala that he forgive us for our sins on the blessed day of Jum'ah within which there is an hour within which no dua of a believer is sent back except that it is accepted. We ask Allah ta'ala that he make that hour now and that he accept our every dua for our goodness and that he protect us from every evil. We send salutations upon the Prophet of Allah, our beloved Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his household, his beautiful companions, and upon his ummah at large. May Allah ta'ala protect them and preserve their iman. Dear brothers and sisters, we spoke last week discussing about the occurrence of the Isra, the night journey of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from one haram to another haram, from one sanctioned area, one sanctioned area of worship to another, min al-Masjid al-Harami ila al-Masjid al-Aqsa. And we mentioned some of the signs and some of the lessons which pertain to that occurrence. We mentioned the context within which the occurrence took place, which was after many difficulties and after many of the struggles of the Messenger of Allah and after years of torment and years of sacrifice, that the occurrence and the blessing of the Isra and the Mi'raj, which are generally mentioned together, was a gift given to the Messenger of Allah and ultimately a gift given to the Ummah by entirety. We also mentioned that the Isra and the Mi'raj, although they occurred together, they both have different purposes. And those purposes, and the fact that those purposes and the lessons are separate, although some may intersect, that they are separate is alluded to within the Quran that Allah Ta'ala spoke about the Isra in Surah Bani Israel but spoke about the Mi'raj in another surah, in Surah Al-Najm. And since we spoke about the Isra last week, and some of the lessons which are taken from the Isra, we're going to try to now spend time on contemplating upon the Mi'raj, the ascension of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Be beyond a sabr tibaq beyond the seven layers, the seven skies, and what had happened during that journey. We know that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu when he made his way to Jerusalem and he was at Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, that Allah Ta'ala resurrected the Anbiya Alayhi Musalatu Wasalam and brought them from a life of Barzakh into this life of dunya once again to welcome the Prophet. Such a great miracle just to welcome the Prophet. And then they all came together. And Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam gave the adhan. And Imam al Mursaleen, the leader of the messengers, Muhammad sallallahu led the prayer, signifying his leadership. 
in this world, in the barzakh, and in the next world. After which, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, still had a journey left. He was prepared for that journey when Allah Ta'ala commanded Jibreel to take him to the Hatim, to extract his heart, to wash his heart with Iman and with Zamzam, and to prepare him for that journey. Throughout the Isra, we mentioned he stopped at certain places. And each place he prayed to Rakat with Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. And this was all preparing for the next journey. This was all in preparation of the next journey, which is from Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu is now taken upon the Mi'raj. The Mi'raj translated and understood as the Ascension. Right? There are other understandings for it as well. But the general understanding that it is referring to the ascension of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu when Jibreel Alayhi Salatu Wasalam once again took the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam upon the buraq, the conveyance and the vehicle given to the Messenger of Allah we mentioned last week. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was permitted to go beyond the sama dunya the sama, the sky in the heaven of this world. The sky in the heaven of this world. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, was taken beyond the sky. What is Sama'ud Dunya? The Sama'ud Dunya is all the stars, all the planets, everything that your eye can see, that is Sama'ud Dunya. That is just the sky of this world. That is just the sky of this world of Allah's creation. And we will mention how one of the lessons of the Mi'raj is to expose the vastness, the greatness of the creation of Allah. And if the creation of Allah Ta'ala must be great, and how great it is, then you cannot imagine the Creator. You can't imagine the Creator. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is taken beyond what the eye can see. And he's taken to the first sky. The first sky. Within which, before entering, before entering each sky, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Jibreel Alayhi Salatu Wasallam seek permission to enter. As it is narrated by Imam Bukhari Rahimahullah and the other narrators of Hadith, فَاسْتَفْتَحْ They seek permission to enter. The, the Messenger and the Angel of that sky is then ordered to ask who is seeking permission. Nothing happens but by the order of Allah. They seek permission, this angel asks, who is seeking permission? Jibreel says, it is me and Muhammad Wasallam. Then he asks, then the angel of this guy asks, were you sent with him? Were you permitted to bring him with you? Jibreel Wasallam answers, yes. Upon which, then this angel says, marhaban bil salih. That welcome to the pious brother. Welcome to the noble brother. وَأَوْحَى فِي كُلِّ سَمَاءٍ أَمْرَهَا Allah Ta'ala said that He commanded to every sky and He revealed to every sky its order. There is an order and a system to every part of the world, to every part of the universe. We see it or beyond it. We see it or beyond it. Within this sky, as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu met prophets before in, uh, in, in Jerusalem, He meets prophets again within each sky. And He meets Adam Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. And Adam alayhi salatu wasalam says, Marhaban bil ibn salihi wa nabiyyi salihi. That welcome to the noble son and the noble prophet. After which then they proceed on to the next sky. But within, within, within the meeting of the Prophet sallallahu and Adam alayhi salam, why was Adam alayhi salatu wasalam chosen to be in this sky? There are different interpretations for this. One of them being the sign that just how Adam والسلام, was sent without his will from Jannah to the dunya, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, will also be sent upon a travel. Remember this, the Mi'raj took place before the Hijrah. This is a sign that you will be what? Exiled from your land, from the land where you reside, from the land of your forefathers, and you will have to leave to another land. Within the first sky, and there are many other occurrences as well 
there are many other stories which the Messenger of Allah وسلم, later on narrated that I saw Laylat al-Usriyabi, I saw the night of the ascension. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, saw some people, one of their, only one of the occurrences I will mention, there's many, that he saw some people and they were eating their own flesh. Their own flesh was being cut off and they were being forced to eat that flesh. The Prophet ﷺ asked Jibreel ﷺ, who are these people? Jibreel ﷺ says, These are those people who despise other people. These are those people who backbite other people. Why and how is the Messenger of Allah ﷺ seeing this and why is he being shown this? We mentioned last week in the Isra, the purpose of the Isra was what? لِنُرِيَهُ min ayatina. Allah Ta'ala said so we can show the Messenger of Allah. In the Mi'raj, it's not only so that he can be shown, but it is what? لَقَدْ رَآ min ayati رَبِّهِ الْكُبْرَى He will be shown and he will see. He will see directive, directly with his own eyes. And Allah Ta'ala will give him the capacity and capability to see beyond what the normal human being can see. People build resilience, people build, they build within themselves the capability to take on certain tasks. You have to have great sight and vision, great hearing, which is not related to your physical hearing, but the hearing of your iman and the sight of your iman to be able to see such occurrences. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as Allah Ta'ala said, إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ In the ayah of Isra, that Allah Ta'ala is all hearing and all seeing, wants the Messenger of Allah Ta'ala to see. In this occurrence is the expansion of the vision of the Messenger of Allah. And so he's seeing things which the normal human being do not see. After which the Messenger of Allah Ta'ala transcends to the next sky. The same thing happens. Permission is sought to enter this sky. Permission is given to the Messenger of Allah in Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. Upon which the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sees within the sky Isa and Yahya alayhi salatu wasalam. What sign, is, what sign lies within the meeting of the Messenger of Allah and these Prophets? Just how Yahya alayhi salatu wasalam was assassinated. And Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, it was attempted that he be also assassinated. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, will also face such difficulty. His own people, just like the people of Yahya and Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, they will attempt to assassinate the Messenger of Allah. We know this occurred when? Before the Hijrah. And many, upon many instances b besides this as well. That the Quraysh came together and they plotted. And Shaytan entered that gathering. And they all plotted. And Shaytan gave the opinion, assassinate the Messenger of Allah before the Hijrah. And it was this which struck the Hijrah of the Prophet The Messenger of Allah and Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam transcend. And they go to the third sky. Upon which they meet Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. What is the wisdom behind the meeting of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam? Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam was driven out of his land by his own brethren, by his own family members, by his own people. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi will also be driven out of his land from his own people, by his own people. And what will happen? Just how Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam reached a state of power then the Prophet ﷺ will also be returned to a state of power. And the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ will say the exact statement which his brother and Prophet Yusuf ﷺ said, when entering upon Mecca, when entering upon the conquest of Mecca, now all the, all the disbelievers are what? Seeking the forgiveness of the Messenger of Allah. They understand that the Muslims are supreme and they understand that they can not only annihilate every single one of them, but they can turn them into slaves and other situations. They all seek forgiveness. Oh, Messenger of Allah, aren't you a noble person? What did the brothers of Yusuf wasalam, say to Yusuf? That aren't you the noble brother? Aren't you a forgiving person? Aren't you a person with a kind heart? The same was said to the Messenger of Allah. And the Messenger of Allah وسلم, the, because all the messengers are brothers. This is, the, this is the beauty of the balance of Islam that we believe in all the Prophets. Why? Because they came with the same message and the same practice. 
Muhammad Sallallahu says to the people exactly what Yusuf والسلام, said in the conquest of Makkah لا تثريب عليكم اليوم that there is no reckoning upon you just how Yusuf did not reckon any punishment upon his brothers for exiling him the same way upon you, O brethren of the people of Makkah there is no reckoning upon you the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu and Jibreel Alayhi Salatu Wasallam transcend to the fourth sky they seek permission permission is given Again, what is the reason behind seeking permission for, for entrance into every sky? It is the fact that Allah Ta'ala said in the Quran, وَأَوْحَى فِي كُلِّ سَمَاءٍ أَمْرَهَا That Allah Ta'ala has revealed and sent to every sky its order and its command. This is the nidham. This is the system of Allah Ta'ala. You and I, we think we travel just a little bit. We see just a little bit of what the dunya. We haven't even seen the complete sama'ud dunya. And we think we understand the world. We think science will take us to an understanding by which we will calculate and measure the whole creation of Allah Ta'ala. There is a world you haven't even seen. There is a world which Allah Ta'ala hasn't even permitted us to see. And in every inch of that world, there is the command of Allah Ta'ala governing that universe, governing that world. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that when I transcended the skies, I didn't see an inch within the sky except that there is an angel which is commanded by Allah Ta'ala to make ruku' and make prostration in that, in that space of the sky. We think that we have traveled space. We think we've seen and perhaps uh, you know, thought of whether there is creation beyond, beyond, the human, beyond the human species. Allah Ta'ala has already told us of this. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu has already told us of this. That there is creation which you have not even seen. And you will not see. This is the greatness and the vastness of the mulk, of the kingdom, of the dominion of Allah Ta'ala. Which you cannot estimate. Which you cannot calculate. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi in the fourth sky meets Idris Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. What is the wisdom of meeting Idris Alayhi Salatu Wasalam? Allah Ta'ala said in the Quran, وَرَفَعَنَاهُ مَكَانًا عَلِيًّا That we raised Idris Alayhi Salatu Wasalam and we gave him a high place of honor. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi is given a place of honor beyond the insults of the, of the disbelievers. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasalam is raised upon a platform beyond the blemishes and the insults which the disbelievers may attribute to him. In the fifth sky, our Prophet of Allah Sallallahu meets Harun Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. What is the wisdom behind meeting Harun Alayhi Salatu Wasalam? Harun Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, his people, they disliked him very much. Why? Because he didn't allow them to worship their, their idols. He didn't allow them to worship the cow and, and, and the idol which Samili in the Quran as, as mentioned, he resurrected. And they disliked him very much. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi will also be asked upon the conquest of Makkah, after destroying the idols, the disbelievers will say that why don't you just allow us to just keep Allah wal Uzza? Just allow us to keep some idols. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi will not allow them. Why? Because shirk is not allowed. Shirk is not allowed. And shirk will not be given permission to. And so this is a reason for them to dislike the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi just how they dislike Harun Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. In the sixth sky, he meets with his brother Musa Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. What is the wisdom behind that? Musa Alayhi Salatu Wasalam was a person who saw much difficulty dealing with the Bani Israel. He saw much difficulty and he bared their difficulties. And this is why when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasalam saw difficulty and had to bear immense patience when dealing with the Quraysh, when dealing with the people of Makkah and the disbelievers, he would say, my brother Musa والسلام, dealt with situations just like this. And he dealt with, with much patience. So I will also endure patience. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, then transcends to the seventh sky where he meets Abu Al-Anbiya Ibrahim والسلام. Ibrahim والسلام, his back is to the Al-Baytul Ma'mur, to the Kaaba of the angels, the house which is ever living and it is infinitely worshipped by the angels and that whenever a group of angels, of thousands of angels make tawaf around that Kaaba, there isn't 
there isn't another angel from that same group that will return to make tawaf. Rather, every group will be a new group of angels who will make tawaf of that Kaaba. He meets Ibrahim wasalam. Ibrahim wasalam gives salam to the ummah. And he says, tell your ummah that do you know how to plant your seed in Jannah? How to from now rent your spot and, and, and grab your spot before it's taken in Jannah? He said, tell them it's what? Tell them it's by saying SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah. This is in reference to what, what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu is going to receive. All of these actions, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, they take place in the Salah. They take place in the Salah. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then transcends, he sees the Sidratul Muntaha, and for everything he sees there are lessons. There are lessons. After which the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is commanded to transcend beyond the Sidratul Muntaha. And what is beyond the Sidratul Muntaha? It is but the Arsh and the throne of Allah Ta'ala. When the Messenger of Allah Ta'ala is commanded to transcend, Jibreel والسلام, says, I can't go further. I cannot go further. This is where I stop. And if I am to go further, then لَأَحْرَقَتْ subuhat وَجْهِ That the rays, the rays of the nur of Allah Ta'ala, they would burn me. But the Messenger of Allah وسلم, is given permission to transcend beyond this. For what? For ultimately the greatest blessing which is to see Allah Ta'ala. To see Allah Ta'ala, to meet Allah Ta'ala, and to receive the gift which Allah Ta'ala wants to give to the Ummah. Wants to give specially to the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Now, when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is something which the Ulama explain. If the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went on with the body and flesh of this dunya, and with the clothing of this dunya, and he was able to transcend, and none of that was burned. But the body of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, had it transcended, it would have burned. Why was this made possible? Why was this made possible? Allah Ta'ala made it to happen that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and everything connected to the Messenger of Allah will gain the blessing of seeing Allah and will not be overwhelmed, will not be overwhelmed by the nur and the light of Allah. What does this mean? Attach yourself to the Messenger of Allah. Attach yourself to the Messenger of Allah. Tomorrow you won't be deprived from seeing Allah. There will be people tomorrow in the, in, the, in the hereafter who will be deprived from seeing Allah. Why? Because they won't have the capability to see Allah. If they see Allah, they will be destroyed. Why? Because they never built the resilience. If tomorrow I tell you lift a, lift a thousand pounds, you won't have the capability unless you build the resilience. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said, tomorrow you will see Allah Ta'ala. And to prepare for the sight of Allah Ta'ala, pray in this world. Pray in this world. That will build inside of you the resilience to see Allah Ta'ala. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu is then in the presence of Allah Ta'ala. And Allah Ta'ala, as He says in the Qur'an, فَأَوْحَى إِلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ مَا أَوْحَى That Allah Ta'ala reveals to him what He reveals. We do not know what He revealed. Except what? That Allah Ta'ala gave him the, the, the noble and the, and, the, and the great decree of the Salah, which the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought back to us. And this is the greatest lesson and the greatest purpose of the Mi'raj. That the obligatory prayers and the salah be granted to you and I. That the salah be granted to you and I. My brothers and sisters, when the Messenger of Allah Ta'ala spoke about the salah, he said, Li ma'allahi waqt. He spoke about the salah metaphorically, talking about it as his appointment with Allah. That I have an appointment with Allah. He wasn't speaking about the mi'raj, which we can all, do, all agree. This was an appointment with Allah and His Messenger, no one could intervene, not even Jibreel. But He said, my salah, my every salah is an appointment with me and Allah. No one can intervene between me and Allah in that message, and that, and that prayer. لا يسعون فيه ملك مقرب ولا نبي مرسل When you stand before Allah, 
the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Nor can any angel, any angel, nor can any messenger come between me and Allah Ta'ala. This is the prayer which you and I were gifted. It is the speech, the munajat. We speak about the munajat and the, 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 the speech taking place between Allah and His Messenger in the Mi'raj. That speech takes place every day between you and I. Every day between you and I. But what happens? We are heedless of it. Just as how there are ahkam. If I led the salah right now and I didn't read Fatiha, what would you say? Read the salah again. That's an obligation, it's a part of the prayer. What if I led the salah and I didn't make sujood? You would complain, right? What kind of prayer is this? Imam Ghazali rahimahullah said that just how prostration is a wajib, it is an obligation of the prayer. Just how Fatiha is an obligation of the prayer. Khushu' devotion, concentration, it is an obligation of the prayer. It's the same obligation which Allah Ta'ala spoke about in the Mi'raj of the Prophet. When the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was taken upon this journey, his eye only saw everything which Allah Ta'ala wanted his eye to see. It, it did not diverge. It did not go towards any other direction. It was devoted. It was concentrated. What happens when a person is con concentrated in his salah? لَقَدْ رَآ مِنْ آيَاتِ رَبِّهِ الْكُبْرَى the way that Allah Ta'ala's Messenger was gifted to see great signs in the Mi'raj. If you have devotion in your prayer, you'll see great signs. Allah Ta'ala will open veils to you. He will show you great signs. He will show you great signs. And so my brothers and sisters, to conclude with this, we know that the month of Rajab is coming to a conclusion. After Rajab is Sha'ban, may Allah Ta'ala allow us to reach the month of Ramadan. What is one of the greatest Obligations upon us in the month of Ramadan is Salah. It's standing in front of Allah Ta'ala. It's standing in front of Allah Ta'ala. If you want to be able to stand in Ramadan, you need to build resilience for it now. You can't say that from tomorrow. If you don't have a habit, if you don't have a habit of waking up early in the morning, it's difficult. You have to build the habit slowly. You have to build resilience. The same way to be able to stand in the month of Ramadan and to be able to execute the Qiyamul Layl, the stance of the night, and to gain the fruits of it in Ramadan, you have to build the resilience of it from now. You have to build the, the preparation for that from now. Otherwise, what will happen? It's just an obligation then. It's just an obligation. One raka'ah, two raka'ah passes, three raka'ah passes. My brothers and sisters, for you and I, to, to pray 20 rakat or 12 rakat or 8 rakat. Better than that is pray 2 rakat with devotion. Better than that is pray 2 rakat with devotion. What kind of relationship and appointment is this? Allah Ta'ala is in front of me. Allah Ta'ala is in front of me. And I'm not paying attention. I'm not paying attention. So you have to build the resilience. You have to build the, uh, the, the, the preparation from that. From now, just how the Messenger of Allah was prepared for the Mi'raj. To, to be able to stand in front of Allah Ta'ala in the hereafter, you have to prepare in this world. Who wishes to meet Allah Ta'ala, you wish to meet Allah Ta'ala in the next world, prepare by doing good deeds in this world. We ask Allah Ta'ala that He give us the capability to uphold the obligation of the Salah. And I mean by that not just praying it, but uphold everything that is within it. Uphold all of the obligations that are within it. We ask Allah Ta'ala that He give us the capability to take the fruits of the Salah, that He give us the capability to see the month of Ramadan and give us the capability to take from the month of Ramadan and the Qiyam of the month of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, Falhamdulillah, Nahmadu, and Astainu, when a staffir who were Minu Bihi, when a Tawakalu Ali, when I would be Lahim and Shuruli and Fusina, when say Ati Amarina, Maya de Lahu Fala Mudilla, or Mayu del Fala Hadilla, when I shadow Allah Ilaha Illa Lahu Wahda Hula Sharikala, when I shadow Anna Sayyidana or Maulana Muhammad and Abdu Rasulu, Ibadullah, in the Lahat Amarakum be Amrin Bada Afihi Binafsi. 
وسنى به الملائكة المسبحة بقدسه وسلس بكم أيها المؤمنون حيث قال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من صلى وصام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من قعد وقام إخوتي وأخواتي الكرام قد أحسن الشاعر حيث قال يا هذه الدنيا أفيقي واسمعي ولا يسمع من كان ضدي أو معي إن بغير محمد لسنا سوى جسد بلا روح يسير ولا يعي يا ليلة الإسراء منها نستقي عبرا ودروسا يرتجيها الألمعي من قال أحببنا الحبيب المصطفى أين الدليل لما تقول وتدعي هل في هدايا وزعت في ليلة أم في دموع قد هو أم في دموع قد هوت من مدمعي لا إنما هو باتباع سبيله والسير في نهج الهدى فافهم وعي من كان يرجو في الحياة نجاته فليستفق من نومه في المضجع والنفس فالجمها وشد وثاقها بل قل لها من ليلها لا تهجعي بل قل لها من ليلها لا تهجعي فجنان ربي لا تجيع بهين بل إنها تأتي بتقوى الركع عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأكبر أقيم الصلاة